Well, Professor Jenny Kitzinger is co-director of the Coma and Disorders of Consciousness Research Centre at Cardiff University and has been campaigning for today's changes for many years. She joins me now from our studios in Cardiff. Good afternoon to you. Thanks Good very afternoon. much indeed for being with us. Um, as I indicated there, you welcome this change. Um, why? I think it's a long overdue clarification of the existing law and it's a huge relief for, for doctors and families who'd made best interest decisions informed by good diagnostic information and a knowledge of the patient and then weren't allowed to enact them because there was this misconception that they needed to go to court. Mm. But you'd agree that those diagnostic decisions can be difficult to make and a number of cases that have ended up at the Court of Protection, they have been overturned. They have. Sometimes the judge has agreed with the family when there's been a dispute where mm. clinicians have wanted to continue treatment and families have said the person wouldn't have wanted it. And judges have really taken the lead in, in promoting patient-centred care and saying that the person's values and beliefs are key here. But doesn't it make sense to have a final backstop, an ultimate backstop with someone completely impartial, not connected with the case, who can look at everything? Um, I'm not saying that doctors wouldn't look at a case dispassionately, but, but is it in that kind of position where they can see what is going on from a distance, you don't think? I think it's very important that the RCP, Royal College of Physicians, and the BMA, British Medical Association, guidelines are followed. Mm -hmm. And they include the request for a second independent opinion from an expert in the field. And I think that's the most compassionate and efficient way of ensuring best interests, whereas what we found with going to court is there have been long, long delays, often months, sometimes years, before cases are resolved. And during all that time, patients are then receiving treatment they wouldn't want or is futile. Mm, some have disagreed with today's decision saying that how can it be in the best interests of any patient to have their food and water removed and as a result suffer pain potentially? I think there's a long established tradition now that we with capacity have the right to refuse some treatment so there's a point for all of us where the benefits are outweighed by the burdens of a treatment. That may be your sixth or seventh round of chemotherapy where you say you'd rather just spend time alone with your family and go in peace. And I think people with profound disabilities have those same rights, not to inevitably have treatment imposed on them. That the rest of us can choose to say, okay, I'll have a feeding tube now, but now I'd like to refuse it. And that's a right that should apply to everybody. Mm. And the key is that the doctors and the family have to be in agreement on this. Yes, and that there has to be a robust best interest decision-making process. And that includes looking at, well, what are the families saying? Is it what they want for themselves? Is it what they want for their son and daughter? Or are they actually speaking for that patient and trying to represent that patient's voice? And that's the key here. Mm, I'm, I'm interested in your particular uh, case, uh, Jenny, because you have personal experience to a degree, it's not exactly the same case, but to a degree of the kind of dilemmas that some families end up going through. Yes, my own sister was severely brain injured in 2009 and she was unconscious for some period and then minimally conscious. And I think I saw from the inside, both for my own family and for the other families I met in the waiting rooms, the huge emotional trauma of that, the, the desire to cling to hope sometimes, regardless of what you're told by clinicians, and the commitment many families have to trying to represent their loved one and do what's right for them. So that certainly has inspired my interest and gave me an insider's view. But since then I've interviewed um, 85 family members from a wide range of families and tracked those families over time to see how their ideas and their experience evolve mm. as the patient goes through the pathway. Mm. But a particular family, if they do disagree with a doctor's um, clinical decision, they can still get uh, an independent decision made by a judge or a court. Absolutely, and I think that's absolutely essential. Courts are very good at managing cases of doubt or dispute. And, you know, there might be a place for mediation before then and, and discussion, but I would actually say, yeah, go to court. The, the, the doctor cannot make a best interest decision about a patient themselves if the family are adamant the patient would have wanted a different course of action. You do need court then, definitely. Mm. Okay. Jenny, it's good to talk to you. Professor Jenny Kitzinger there, uh, Director of Coma and Disorders Consciousness Research Centre at Cardiff University. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.